So Mark put up our Christmas decorations yesterday. They are very minimal. And I know that it's not light enough or that it's not focusing well because I'm trying to keep the light low so you can see the lights. I don't know what to do with my red balls. I like my red balls. But I don't have a bowl big enough or a glass jar big enough to put them in. I thought I'd say a bit more, a bit more about um, the passive aggressive adaptation that um, is, uh, was, I say was part of my script um, after my therapy training and my therapy I um, had, I suppose, um, I'm not going to say I'd completely got rid of it, but I'm, I had changed my behaviour to um, a more um, authentic way of behaving. Um, and it's very rare now I find myself in the place I was in the other day um, uh, where the passive aggressive part of me was really quite um, uh, high on the agenda. I'm going to um, read a bit from, I know this is back to front, it's the Dictionary of Transactional Analysis. And I'm just going to read the bit, a couple of bits. So bear with me. If you're not interested, look at something else. Um, personality, uh, passive aggressive personality adaptation. So this isn't a personality disorder. It's an adaptation. And we all have uh, grow up with... Um, adaptations and personality adaptations to cope with or deal with life and, and our upbringing and one of mine was passive aggressive um, it's a personality pattern characterized by rebelliousness curl surprise um, coupled with a reluctance to initiate the rebelliousness is usually expressed covertly by stubborn Resentful or manipulative behaviour, people with this pattern have not found it safe to ask openly and directly for their needs and wants as children. Um, and that is really important because I was stroked constantly for not asking for my needs to be met, for not asking for anything. anything. I can hear my mum now saying, oh, Kath, you know, she's, she's so undemanding. And that is how I grew up. You know, when you get stroked for that type of behaviour, especially if you're not getting stroked for a lot else, then you, <clears throat> you know, that's the, the behaviour you work on if that's where your strokes are coming from. So I got stroked for not asking for my needs to be met, for not wanting and I did want, there were lots of things I wanted, but they they weren't, I wasn't getting them. Um, but I was getting stroked for not wanting, for not asking, for not needing. Um, and that was how I developed this passive aggressive adaptation. Um, the other bit in the book, I'll put that back. The other bit in the book says um, that there are four passive behaviours um, each involves avoiding problem solving in the here and now. Uh, although energy may be discharged inappropriately, they discount the individual's ability to act positively, positively to have their needs met. Um, and the four passive behaviours are doing nothing. Um, over adaptation, this involves complying with child belief about what, other what the other person wants without checking. Um, I think that I used that a lot. Um, believing that I know what someone wants, believing that I can read your mind, which is why, uh, conversely, I want I want you to to read my mind. You know, I want you to see what I want. Um, agitation, purposeless, repetitive behaviour to discharge tension. It's going to piss Joe off now if she watches this, but we were stuck in the car at Calais. Um, waiting to cross 
just around um it was just around the like the day after the vote to leave the uk uh, to year the european union um and we were sitting in the car and for some reason the whole lot had all come to a standstill i can't remember whether we were going on the ferry or through the tunnel anyway there was a big long wait sitting in the car with no nobody telling us what was going on and mark and i um just if if something like that happens that's out of your control we just sit and wait we chat we read we watch see what's going on but we don't we don't get agitated and we'd got joe in the car this time and she during the time that we were caught in this massive tailback of cars was was highly energized and um was on twitter looking at euro tunnel on twitter are they not telling us they're doing this they're doing that and it was just constant and it was really funny to witness um because we were just sitting waiting because this is out of your control um so agitation isn't gonna do anything apart from agitate you but it's a way of discharging that energy um that you're feeling because you're used to being in control um the other the fourth behavior is incapacitation or violence energy is turned inward against the self or outwards against others instead of being put into problem solving um, i'm going to just read this paragraph even though we're not talking about clients when working with passive clients inviting them into over adaptation may offer a route forward in that the client becomes actively responsive to the therapist who can then invite them into authentic behavior um i got another anecdote about what what i learn and and how i moved on from um passive aggressive behavior um it, uh, 22 years ago probably 22 23 24 24 years ago long time ago and um uh, mark and i were where we were in um, the day hospital in kent and um i we had a uh, we had a staff room and we had a, a diary you know a, a staff diary with everything written in it that was going on and um what I'd learned to do over the years is wait for people to notice it was my birthday um, or say nothing about my birthday and then ex and then be able that the passive aggressive can then grumble because they forgot my birthday. That's how we did it. That's how passive aggressives do it. You know, expect to be remembered, expect to have their mind read and then grumble at the person who didn't read their mind or remember them or remember their birthday or remember that important date you know i've got this important date it's important to me that you didn't remember it it's like well why why should people remember it if it's important to you the only way you're going to get them to remember it is to remind them if it's important for you that they remember it so anyway we'd got the staff diary and um over a period of a couple of months i would write in it it's Kathy's birthday next month. It's Kathy's birthday next week. It's Kathy's birthday. And, you know, sort of made a big thing because it was about the important, what I learned was that, you know, I, I needed people to, to see me and to remember me and remember my birthday. So I did all of this. And then and when my birthday came, got loads of birthday cards. I got two from Mark. We weren't even in a relationship. He'd said no to me a couple of times, but we weren't in a relationship and I got two cards from him. I did tell him not to make a noise and here he is with a pile of wood. Are you making a noise? No. Oh, he's making signs at me though. And not the friendliest of signs, but I had told him to fuck off, so that's probably why. So yeah, that worked. And it, it the, the thing, I think the, the thing is, is that we believe that if we um, do that, if we get people to notice us, ask people for what we want, then it's wrong. It's wrong to ask for our needs to be met, and it, it's not. You're not going to like. You're not going to enjoy a birthday present as much if you've had to really remind someone and push someone to buy it for you. It, it, there's some belief that it won't have the same value, or if for instance one of the things that we were that i learned during my um therapy training um my transactional analysis uh, therapy training was um to ask for strokes 
So instead of waiting for people to say, um, oh, I, I really like you, or I love you, or um, uh, I'm trying to think of unconditional strokes, because they're the really important ones, unconditional strokes, not, not um, uh, I like you when you're nice, or I like it when you talk about this, but just the unconditional, I love you, I like you, it's good to be with you, you're fun to be with, um, all of those things, if you ask for them, it, th there's some belief that you're that they're not going to have the same value as those that come at you unasked for. And that there, there's a bit, there is a truth in that, you know, in that if you get a stroke out of the blue, it is really stroking and it does have value, but it doesn't devalue the ones that you have asked for. So it's the same with, you know, making sure you get noticed and making sure your birthday is remembered and making sure that you're meeting your needs. They, it does have value. And I, and I think many of us were brought up with, and I can't remember the saying, I was trying to remember it last night, with uh, ask, don't get, or something like that. Uh, some sort of, if you ask, you won't get it. Um, it's better to be quiet. In other words, shut up. So anyway, that was my, um, one of my personality adaptations. I can't remember the other one. Um, but then they're still around. You know, I still can be passive aggressive, but the difference is, is that I know when I'm being passive aggressive, it's not unconscious. I'm not doing it as part of my, um, uh, I'm not living in that place, believing that to be the, the way to be. I um, am aware of it, you know, and sometimes um, when he and I are playing and joking together, I'll, I'll do it. That might have been passive aggressive then you know telling him about being quiet and coming in with the wood and all of that but i know what i'm doing it's a conscious thing whereas quite what happens initially is that our personality adaptations are frequently um unconscious oh my other one was please others i can't remember what i did about that and i'm not i'm not going to do uh, talk about that at all now because i it's like it, it it's not current but the passive aggressive um, adaptation was because of what I spoke about yesterday and now I can't remember what I spoke about. Um, I tried to, um, last night, I tried to install the mobile app, banking app, and it wouldn't verify me and I did it three times and we can't verify you and um, as normal I get so frustrated with that that I uninstalled it, uninstalled the app. And I think I think it was my phone number that um, was not verifying. And I think it might be that I was giving them zero as the first number rather than seven or, you know, and I'm I'm just like, oh, that's what frustrates me. Other, for, I don't know. It must be me because it happens to us a lot. You know, nothing is ever straightforward. Um, technology isn't straightforward. The Internet isn't straightforward. All of us trying to connect when I got bought the Mac home um the keyboard wouldn't work the bluetooth wouldn't work i've got a plugged in keyboard i've got a plugged in microphone all of that stuff is never straightforward and here i am trying to install the telephone app and it's not straightforward i might try it again i might try it again in a bit but um in the meantime i'm going to go and prepare the falafels and then they can sit and absorb all the flavors before i cook them later so there okay if that was boring for you, tough. If you enjoyed it, great. Um, have a good day.